Hello students, welcome to my class. This is Professor Vicente Saga and this is uh, part five of chapter 13 presentation, current liabilities and uh, contingencies. Here is where we left off. Contingencies, what are contingencies? Or what is a contingency? We are told here that an existing condition, situation, or set of circumstances involving uncertainty as to possible gain or loss to an enterprise that will ultimately be resolved when one or more future events occur or fail to occur. What does that mean? That simply means a potential gain or loss to our company that is contingent upon something happening or something not happening. For example, if another company sue our company for a million dollars, that one million dollars liability or obligation is contingent upon the outcome of the case in court. So the question is, how do we record and report contingencies? So let's take a look at the, the accounting rules. Number one, gain contingencies. Typical gain contingency are as follows. Possible receipt of money from gift, donation, asset sales. Possible refund from the government in tax dispute. Number four, tax laws, carry forward, so on and so forth. So those are typical gain contingency. One important rule that I need you to make a note of here is Game contingencies are not recorded. What do you mean by recorded? Meaning, meaning they are not accounted for, you know, journalized, posted to the journal. They are not recorded. We disclose, in other words, we have them as part of notes to the financial statement only if probability of receipt is high, but they are not recorded. Okay, moving along, let's take a look at uh, loss contingencies. Loss contingencies involve possible losses now let's take a look at the likelihood of the loss FASB uses three areas of probability here number one probable number two reasonably possible and number three remote now what does that mean that simply means that if a loss contingency is probable that means it is based on the facts and circumstances it is very likely that we are stuck or we are going to be stuck with this potential loss so for example we have a, a driver uh, that help us to drive uh, uh, for our company and this driver has a history of drinking and we never fired the driver and the driver ran into some people and injured a lot of people, right? The evidence is overwhelming. It is very likely that we are stuck with the one or two million dollars litigation. So it is probable that we are going to lose. So in such circumstance, uh, that is one possibility. What do we do? We accrue, meaning we record it in our journal, post to the ledger, blah, blah, blah. And in addition to recording it and uh, reporting it in our financial statement we also have it as part of uh, our note disclosure so we are crew we have put notes then the second the possibility or likelihood is reasonably possible uh, here it is likely that uh, based on the facts and circumstances it's likely that uh, we might lose this case but maybe not quite so in such circumstance we are only uh, disclose it as part of our note disclosure without actually accruing or recording it. That is reasonably possible. Then the third, if it is remote, if there is if there is a slight possibility of uh, this case coming to fruition, we just ignore. We don't accrue. We don't uh, uh, disclose it uh, either. On the CPA examination, sometimes they will play games with uh, words like reasonably probable. Reasonably probable and probable are the same. So I want you to uh, watch out for that. So let's take a look at the application of these rules that we just uh, went through. So this company is involved in a lawsuit at December 31st, 2014. 
A, we are going to prepare the December 31st entry assuming that it is probable that S will be liable for $900,000 as a result of this. B, prepare the December 31st entry if any, assuming it is not probable that S will be liable for any payment as a result of this uh, uh, lawsuit. So the first uh, scenario is probable. So we debit lawsuit loss and uh, we credit the lawsuit liability. So this is actually being recorded uh, and uh, ultimately being reported in the financial statement. Now the second situation whereby we assume that it is not probable, no entry is necessary and the loss is not accrued because it is not probable that the liability has been incurred at the end of the year. So here are some examples of uh, loss contingencies. You can go through all these, the ones that are usually accrued and the ones that are usually not uh, accrued. So here are some common loss contingencies. Uh, litigation, claims assessment, uh, guarantee and warranty costs, premiums and coupons, environmental liabilities. We are going to talk more about some of these in a minute. So let's take a look at uh, litigation, claims and assessment. Uh, uh, in determining whether to record a liability with respect to this, uh, 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 the question becomes the time period in which the action occurs, the probability of an unfavorable income, and the ability to make a reasonable estimate are the key things that we need to look at. So here is one uh, loss contingency that we usually accrue for, a guarantee or warranty cost. Usually, the manufacturer of a product, uh, let's assume a television set, would have a one-year uh, warranty, meaning they are giving you the guarantee that, that the television will work the way the TV is supposed to work for at least one year. Now, when they produce 10,000 TV set, it is not an issue of whether some of them might not work or not. It's a matter of how many of them might not work within a year period. So from that standpoint, at the end of the year, we need to accrue and make an adjustment and make provision for X amount of dollars relative to the warranty expense. Now, there are two methods of doing so. Number one, we have the cash basis method. Okay, and number two, we have the accrued basis method. Okay, now let's take a look at the uh, accrued basis method. Here in this example, uh, the company sold half a million dollars worth of goods. So cash or accounts receivable is debited, sales revenue is credited. That is very simple, straightforward. So between July through December 2004, take a look at what happened. The company actually cough out $4,000 during that time frame. So the debit warranty expense and the credit cash for $4,000, either cash or inventory. Why inventory? Because sometimes they might have to go ahead and replace the television set. So in such circumstance, inventory goes down, not cash. So we credit cash or uh, uh, payroll. Now the third scenario uh, is, is this. Now at the end of December, we now accrue for X amount of dollars that will result in warranty expense. So we debit warranty expense for 16,000 and credit warranty liability for 16,000. So during the year, we actually spend 4,000, we accrue for 16,000. Now, in the following year, we actually wind up a, a, a coughing out $16,000 and we debit a warranty liability to get rid of the liability and credit cash or inventory as previously explained. So here is another example of a loss contingency, premiums and coupons. Most of you are already familiar with this, all right? Uh, whereby you have uh, 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 premiums or coupons that you redeem from the store. So here are the rules. Company estimate the number of outstanding premium offers that customer will present for redemption. Company charges the cost of premium for offers to premium expense and credit their premium liability. So let's take a look at uh, an example here, all right? The, in terms of the application. So this company offers its customer a large non-breakable non mixing pool in exchange for 25 cents and 10 uh, 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 box top. So the company uh, uh, asks the customer to bring in 10 box tops and pay 25 cents 
In exchange, the company will give them a mixing bowl that costs them 75 cents. So let's take a look at what happened here. When the company bought the mixing bowls, the company debit inventory of premiums for 15,000 and the credit cash for 15,000. So that is what the, the cost of the uh, mixing bowl that they are going to give us. Now, so let's take a look at what happened. Uh, during the year, the, co uh, the company actually recorded a, a, a sales of $240,000, okay? So the debit cash for $240,000 and the credit sales uh, revenue for $240,000. Now, guess what happened? The customer actually redeemed uh, 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 the, the premium. So they, 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 they brought in $60,000 box tops. They have to also pay 25 cents per 10 box tops. So we divide the 60,000 box tops by 10 because it's 10, 25 cents per 10 box tops. Then we multiply that by 25 cents because the customer has to pay 25 cents. So we receive $1,500 from the customers. Now, the premium expense is 3,000. Guess what? Uh, this is not a, a good presentation. This is credit. So the inventory of 4,500. So we cover the inventory of the premium of 4,500. We receive 1,500 from the customer. So the actual premium expense is $3,000. Now, here is another important uh, journal entry that you need to know. The question becomes, for the uh, 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 bus, for the uh, premiums that have not been redeemed, what is the likelihood, what is an estimate of what might be redeemed in the future? So let's take a look at uh, how the company will make the year-end adjustment. Take a look at what happened here. The total bus stop sold in 2014 was 300,000. We estimate that 60% based on our history will be redeemed. So 60% of 300,000 will give you 180,000. Now in 2014, 60,000 was redeemed, so we have 120,000 uh, 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 estimated future redemption. So we divide the 120,000 by 10, uh, and multiply that by uh, the difference between uh, 75 cents, which is the cost of the missing bowl, and the 25 cents, that will give us uh, 6,000. So we debit the uh, premium expense for 6,000, and credit the uh, premium liability for uh, 6,000. So, uh, 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 so that is the year-end adjustments. Uh, moving along, the last issue, environmental liabilities, another uh, example of a uh, loss contingency. So yeah, a company recognizes an asset retirement obligation when it has an existing legal obligation associated with the retirement of a long life asset and when it can reasonably estimate the amount of the liability. So. Um, here is an uh, example of an existing obligation. You know, read, read this on your own. Here's the application. So, this company estimates that uh, the assets retirement obligation will be 620000 So, they debit the uh, drilling platform for 620000 and credit the assets retirement obligation for 620000 So, look at what happened. Subsequently, the asset is going to be depreciated over five years period. So depreciation expense is debited, accumulated depreciation is credited. Now, it was estimated that it was $1 million. The $620,000 was the present value. So the difference between the present value and the $1 million is uh, the, the potential interest. So we amortize this and debit interest expense for $62,000 and credit assets obligation for 62,000. We do that every year. At the end of the fifth year, guess what happened? The assets retirement obligation is debited for uh, 1,000 to get rid of that. And we cough out the $995,000. The difference between that and the million dollars is considered as a gain on settlement of the AROO. So self-insurance is no insurance but risk assumption. In other words, instead of insuring your company, you are taking the risk on your own. So now, 
Let's take a look at the presentation and the analysis. So the question is, what does the number mean? So at the end of the day, by the time we understand these accounting principles and how to apply them, we now have to prepare the balance sheet. So the presentation of current liabilities. Here is an example of uh, the presentation, and the, this is the example of the presentation. But in terms of the analysis, take a look at uh, one of the reasons why we have to break down uh, 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 liabilities into current liabilities and uh, 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 long term. So, analysis of current liabilities. Look at what happened here. One way of uh, determining a company's ability to pay off current liabilities is to compute their current ratio, which is computed as current asset divided by current uh, liabilities. So, what does that mean? That simply means for every one dollar that you owe, how much you have in current assets to pay it off. In this case, look at the current asset is 10.2, current liability is 8.8. .8. If you do the math, you have 1.16 times, meaning for every one dollar in current liability, the company has one dollar sixty cent to pay off that one dollar in current liabilities. And of course, the question is, is that good or bad? It depends on the, uh, the average current ratio in that particular industry. And of course, they have another one here, acid test ratio. In other words, this ratio measures your ability to pay current liabilities as fast as possible. Hence, we call it acid, acid test. So uh, that is another analysis of uh, 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 current uh, 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 liabilities. So that is the end of the presentation of uh, chapter 13.